about. Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> All right, I'll start with you, Daniel, action figure insider. Hi, guys. Uh, great to talk to you. Um, Chris, I know you're a huge fan of the, the retro Star Wars stuff, and I've been really loving what you guys have been doing with that. Um, but it still seems like you, you're just kind of tiptoeing into the waters doing characters from the original trilogy that were never made back then. Will we start to see more of that? Because so far we've only kind of got two of those. And it seems like there's more low-hanging fruit that uh, those of us that enjoyed the Kenner figures would like to have in our collection. Yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly something we, we look at all the time. Uh, you saw, I mean, we... we Pipeline announced the uh, the Return of the Jedi figures, it's kind of hitting those core main characters. Um, but Retro's doing amazingly well, and fans love it. Casual fans love it. It's it's in new places. So I I certainly think that we'll be doing more things that will excite people. So I don't have anything to announce, obviously, but it's we're fully behind doing more and more retro stuff. All right, great, thank you. Nick from Cool Toy Review. Hey, uh, mine's more of a clarification question. At the STCC panel, you guys unveiled the first two waves of the Black Series Return of the Jedi carded figures, but at PulseCon, you had a different second wave, and I was curious if that is an addition to the two waves, or is it replacing the second wave? Yeah, it's good news. In addition to, um, we actually revealed the first two waves at um, at DCC, I think. Yeah, so so there's there's definitely figures to come, and all of those that we pipelined are coming down the line. Okay, so this was just more figures on top of the ten you already showed. Okay, yep. thank you. <laughs> That's good news. Cool. All right, David. Hi everyone. Um, curious about the the you guys put up an, uh, the B2 emo figure for uh, Hasbro PulseCon exclusive. Uh, is there a, a way that regular buyers are going to be able to get that droid, or maybe a new version of that droid later on? Yeah. So right now, you know what you have seen is what we have um, revealed, and that is that our PulseCon exclusive that we love, Eric, on our team uh, for Black Series Works diligently on that there was definitely some some engineering and design genius to making that droid work um so that's what's out there right now we have nothing to share or any plans to bring that out further so you know de definitely get that out while get that while it's still out hey um jesse by chance hey did you make it okay yeah, yeah. hey guys uh, are there any plans right now to revisit the technology behind the hyper real figures or maybe find other ways of targeting that higher end collectible market? Yeah, wow, hyper real. Um, but we do not have any plans to revisit that technology, um, but we always keep the door open. Like for us, we have that technology. We definitely, you know, keep a close eye on what the demand is out there should it explode or, you know, resurface by any means. Um, so currently, no, um, but, you know, it's interesting that you ask that and if you guys hear anything or want anything in particular, let us know. Okay, clapping place, Mike. Hey, everybody. Um, going back to the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary lines, uh, can you talk a little bit about how what the process was in coming up with which characters to reintroduce to the Black Series? and vintage collection lines and, and which ones to add for the first time, such as Wicket? Yeah, do you want to take that one, Chris? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, well, it's a it's a balance of, of a lot of things. I mean, Wicket for Black Series is one of those figures that he, he was missing, or at least felt missing. Um, so I think he was an important one to get in Otherwise, I mean, it's it's looking for those main cast key characters in there that that really define what that entertainment's about. So for Return of the Jedi, I mean, you see 
you see, like we kind of covered all of those main cast of characters, and Wicket had such presence on screen. He was an important one to add to that list. So it, it really is just about covering off those key characters for those anniversary beats. Yeah, we felt like it was his time to shine, um, <laughs> which, you know, hopefully all the fans agree with us. It's a great figure. Um, cool. All right, Volker. Hi there. I um, hope you can see and hear me because I'm not sure if this is working. It is. Working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. we can see you. Okay, good. Um, so let me start with the just announced and the Bunker playset is just awesome. And hopefully it comes with double sliding doors and some gimmicks and a Nick Sand. Can you like give us some more details, maybe some hints if you're looking like a bigger playset or rather smaller? Well, it's it's in kind of that same area as our previous mainline playsets. It's not it's not like the Boa Fett throne room. It's not that kind of thing. It's it's more of the typical playset size you would expect. Okay. Um, as far as as details and stuff, we just we have to hold on that until we get closer to a, a true reveal of it. But I think you guys will appreciate what we're doing there. Yeah. Let cool. Emily work her magic, like you said. Yeah, yeah um, Emily. Yeah. I'm sure she does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know it's in good hands. Yeah, oh, definitely. It's in good hands. She is working hard on that set. Um, all right, I'm gonna go right back up to the top, and we'll do the next round, Daniel. Hi again. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm super excited about the announcement you guys had of a new sculpt for R2D2 in the Star Wars Black Line for the 40th anniversary. Um, I'm just wondering. I know there are actual digital files and scans of the prop available, and I just want to see if you guys are going to be using that to make sure you get the detail and scale correct this go around. Uh, this R2 is is the best R2 we've ever done. Uh, it's scale accurate. Uh, it's based off of measurements that I personally took off of real droids in the archives. So it's it's dead on. I love that answer. Thank you. Yep. Dead on. You have an R2 fan here in Chris. I, I'm sure I wouldn't let it can. happen if it wasn't right. So. <laughs> He would personally it. get in there and say no. Yeah, no, it's it's he's he's definitely making sure that it's the best that we can put out there and the most accurate. Like he builds R2 in his own time. Like it's it's going to be um a great one that we are excited to bring out for Black Series. Great. Uh David. All right, next up, um, for the PulseCon exclusive rescue set, we have the Mando with uh, vintage collection Mando with soft goods. Wondering when we can expect the same treatment for the, the Black Series six inch because uh, the recent two pack with Ahsoka is just another, you know, re-release of the same Mando. And we're, we kind of have an army of those guys already without soft goods. Well, we don't, we don't have anything to announce today. Um... But yeah, I mean, soft goods do nicely on that figure. I and mean, with TVC, I mean, the first one we did, I think, was the the one that came with the Razor Crest, because it was it was important for the figure to be able to sit in the vehicle he was flying around in. So the soft goods made that important. Uh, we had the chance to bring that back out in that that rescue set, um, but but nothing to announce for Black Series right now. Yeah, but thank you for raising it up and letting yeah. us know we love it, we hear it's it in our hands. yeah <laughs> yeah it's in our hands we we love mando um so i'm sure there's always mandos <laughs> there's just there's just a never-ending chain, chain of mandos because we think he's awesome um and we can't wait to see him in the new season all right jesse so obviously we're still a couple years away from 2025, but as we get closer to the 10th anniversary of The Force Awakens, I'm curious if you guys are putting together any plans for that, if, if there are plans to sort of go back and revisit some of those sequel trilogy characters that even either haven't had a figure recently or hadn't had one at all. Yeah, um, I would say, you know, we do love anniversaries here at Star Wars, but we don't have anything to share for any future programs at this point. Um, you know, it's something, especially for 25, I think we are 
we're we're sharing next year where we have two big anniversaries coming up. But we'll definitely keep an eye out and we'd love to hear from the community on where the demand is and what they would like to see. Um, but yeah, nothing to share at this moment. All right, Mike, laughing place. Hi again. With older you, fans such oh, as myself. Did you sorry, hear Mike, you're, you broke up a little bit right after you said okay. hi again. We kind of lost you. So. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. I wanted to ask about Andor. Um, this, the series is already a big hit, obviously, with older fans on Disney Plus, such as myself. Um, but I wanted to ask you guys, because of the tone of this series skews a little bit older, do you find that you're target, targeting the toys more toward adult collectors? Yeah, we we don't discriminate here. <laughs> um, you know, certainly adult collectors are more likely to have seen the show. And like you point that, like you mentioned, it's um, well received so far. We are certainly fans and we love it ourselves. Um, but it's an action fan, so action figures that we've been revealing. So anyone is is free to play with Andor himself or any of you know his companions that we've put out there, um, as long as you're four plus, as you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so you know, it's it's great that Andor is definitely hitting on some of those fan bases that you're mentioning as well, because we think that's great. Yeah, you probably won't see Andor things coming to Mission Fleet, but yeah, and in, in our Figure lines, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Volker. All righty, question number two. At SDCC, you pipeline the speeder bike. We really miss those smaller vehicles. In many of the series on Disney+, Plus, there are lots of different speeders and small vehicles. What are the chances we'll start seeing more of these smaller vehicles? Yeah, well, keep letting us know on what you guys want. And let us, and we also, you know, look at how these things do when we bring them out into the market and stuff because we certainly hear it and then we definitely want to to you know balance what that demand is with our fan base um as you know we pipeline that so we're excited for to bring that to market soon um but i think for the future we have nothing to announce per usual but but okay. keep putting out there anything that you guys think are worth doing because we definitely want to hear and understand what where those demands are coming from um, but yeah, I think the speeder bike is a great start. Um, so I think that one is, I think Chris, you worked on that yourself, right? Like, yeah. I think that's going to be a great one uh, to bring out there. Okay, thanks. All right, Daniel. Oh, I'm sorry. I got, I got skipped that round. Oh, I'm Nick. sorry. Okay. That's all right. My mistake. That's all right. I'll just throw my question in really quick. Please. Uh, with so many retro figures coming out now, uh, has there been any thought into a retro collection figure case, maybe based on the Darth Vader or C-3PO Kenner molds, or maybe something new? Uh, nothing currently, um, but I mean, you can see behind me, I mean, there's my 3PO and my Vader cases. I mean, I, they're certainly in my head, and I'm pulling my my original Kenner figures out of my old cases to reference them all the time, so it's... It's in my head, but nothing to talk about. So, Thanks. I like, your, I like your thinking, though. Yeah, <laughs> we're like expand more. We like we like that thinking. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, Nick. But we're gonna come to you right after this, so you'll be next after um after Daniel. Daniel. So, uh, yep. With the vintage collection, we're getting close to completing a couple of groups, uh, such as we've got just one. One more unmade character that was on the Tatooine skiff, and we're, you know, still haven't heard in a little bit about kind of some of the remaining 96 Kenner figures showing up in vintage collection. And uh, will we ever see like vintage collection versions of Kenner guys like Gray, Death Squad, Commander, or Blue Snaggletooth? I love the the Kenner Deco thought there. Those those are a Blue Snaggletooth would be amazing. Uh, that uh, makes by the way, eyes. today today is the tenth anniversary of Blue Snaggletooth becoming canon on Clone Wars. On Clone Wars, yeah, no, that's fun. Uh, man, okay, now you're hurting my brain, man. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, we don't currently have any plans for that. Just to be clear, uh, I love the thought of it, um, but no plans for that. 
Um, as far as other figures, I mean, we obviously can't comment on stuff we haven't announced yet. You guys know that well. But it, those requests are are in our heads. Uh, we're aware of them. And we're always looking to find that the balance for the right time to answer those requests in a, in a nice, meaningful way. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right, Nick, <laughs> back to you. Yes. OK, my uh, third question is to see if you guys have a status update on the Black Series concept Darth Vader and Kenobi that was shown off in May as a Disney Store exclusive, which hasn't gone up for pre-order or sale yet. Just curious on when, if that's still coming out this year or what the time release is on that. Yeah, no, thank you for um, keeping that in mind and top of radar for sure. Um, I I know that's a Shop Disney exclusive, so we'll definitely work closely with them to see if we can re-promote and share out and communicate when that is coming out for you guys. Um, it's a figure, it's a set rather, that we're really excited to to see bring into the line again. And yeah, we will we'll, we'll definitely talk to them and communicate and share the, out those news as soon as we can. Thanks. They sold it at shop the at the D23 Expo, but I haven't seen it since. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think it may, we'll definitely uh, try to nail down the the more general specifics. So maybe there's something that we can share broader beyond that. Awesome. All right, David. All right. Um, for the 40th, uh, we have Return of the Jedi coming back. I'm just wondering if there's any um, thoughts to bringing the vehicles back, like the A-Wing or the B-Wings, you know, something that we haven't seen in a while, but collectors and fans all love. Um, well, we're we're constantly looking at, at timing for those things and whether they'd be more important than another vehicle or, or that sort of thing. So it, it all goes back to the balancing of the line and, and when the right time for those is. There's certainly fun things to get to. Uh, we, do, we don't have any plans for them right now, but we are constantly looking at that sort of thing. And I think the the speeder bike is a good example of that. It's a small one, but it's super meaningful to Return of the Jedi. So that, that sort of thing is... is I mean, we say it all the time. It's always in our brains, I mean, we're always looking for ways to bring meaningful vehicles and stuff to TBC to continue that world building. Yeah, and when requests come up, it's in our <laughs> it comes in our brain. Yeah. Now, if like, ever, we'll think, yeah, we're yeah. Think, yeah. So I I would say like the fan base has been so good about communicating and sharing what they've wanted, and they've done you know brackets and stuff like that. So I think it's just really important to always constantly. Um, raise up what your demands are because it tells us a lot um so you know like chris said the speeder is an awesome one to get out there and then we'll just continuously keep our ears and eyes peeled to, to what you guys are asking for yeah jesse so looking back at the the previous star wars has lab projects uh you've had a couple that were really successful and a couple that didn't quite meet their funding goals so were, uh what lessons would you say you've taken away from those projects uh as you plan what you might be trying out in the future um well we're we're constantly learning i mean we're we're humans and that's part of the fun here is is figuring new things out figuring out what works what doesn't uh, we're looking at all of our other brands because Hasbro is doing a ton of amazing HasLab projects. So looking across those, at how those have worked, and taking all those learnings into account. I mean, we don't we don't have anything to tell you guys about anything new, but uh, I mean, it's a HasLab program is a is a super powerful platform for us to to try things on and be able to get stuff to you guys that that wouldn't work in mainline traditionally. So I think we'll just we'll just keep moving forward and try other things and let the let the platform do what it does best and that's let the fans essentially vote. Yeah. But yeah, I mean to just elaborate a little, we definitely paid attention to other brands, but of course our own Hat Labs and everything like that. We listened to all the fans and their comments and their videos and their 
um, articles that they've written, especially those that have been, you know, very genuine and deep dive into the processes and what they thought and everything like that. So um, we will always, we have, like I said, nothing to share, but we'll always keep in mind all of the things that we've learned across the board. And what's great about HasLab is it tells us it's a voting system. It tells us what what the fans want and what they what they're willing to to back. Uh, Mike. Okay, uh, can you guys talk a little bit about the uh, Cantina Band Troop Builder box set? Because I think that's really cool. And um, I was just wondering where that idea came from and what the appeal is both for you guys and for consumers about buying them all in one big box as opposed to one at a time, uh, you know, multiple copies of the same figure. Yeah, that well, that whole program of the, the Troop Builder sets is a, it's a fun way to get multiple figures for troop builders out to people uh, in a more cost effective way because those we're not having we're not putting each of those in their own package and not having to deal with the same sort of issues. It, it can be more efficient that way um, so that it helps on it helps on cost for a troop builder figure, but it also lets us do and, and play with some things. Uh, the Cantina Band specifically was one of those ones that came out of the great partnership with Lucasfilm where we were trying to figure out how we wanted to do those those figures as as i think initially we were talking about doing them as a couple of four packs and that didn't like how was that going to make sense and it was through discussions with lucasfilm that we we settled on well okay let's make this one a, a special one and do the entire band is as one set and instead of instead of making it a troop builder where you'd have to buy multiple sets let's, let's just do one awesome set kind of in the same vein, but deliver all those instruments and, and get all those characters in one hit. And I think that that worked out great. Um, the response has been has been great to the news. I mean, you guys saw the photos of it. It, it looks amazing. Uh, Emily, Emily can rattle off the names of those instruments like no one I've ever met. And I've been doing this for a long time. And I, I remember a couple here and there, but man, <laughs> yeah. she can she can just run down the list. Um, Emily and Eric can both do it, but it's yeah, they're both great. Yeah, it's a band though. We wanted to keep the band together. Yeah. <laughs> we're not breaking up the band. Um, well, in those so. those boxes for those things too, like it's it's so fun to like have the whole lineup in the the artwork for those boxes. I mean, our our team has done such a great job on those things. It, yeah, I think it's working really well. I hope you guys do. Okay. Thank you. Well, it looks like the vintage collection offerings for the return of the Jedi 40th anniversary are mostly repacks of Jabba's goons. Are you holding things back now? Just asking so we can see hopefully some newness next year. Well, next year is a full year. <laughs> we we don't have anything to share with you guys right now, but of course not. There, there's more 40th and it's a big year. So just stay tuned. I think you'll you'll be happy. Yeah. Okay, We're thanks. still in 2022, guys. It's still October of 2022. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's a big anniversary year for us. So definitely stay tuned. All righty. All right, moving back up, Daniel. So I'm going to pivot on my fourth question because someone else asked a similar question to what I submitted. Uh, I know we live in a world uh, where we don't really have Toys R Us in the United States anymore, and supply chain issues are still very squirrely. But can you guys ever envision doing another Midnight Madness release for uh, a Star Wars project? Man, those are fun times, aren't they? They are. <laughs> I uh, I don't think it's something off the board. It's just figuring out in our new ecosystem how that works, and I. We love the energy of that for sure. I mean, Jin can talk to it too. But I mean, as a fan, I was there. I remember midnight craziness in in '99 for Episode One, and all the way through. Like, there have been some fun times. So I hope we can find a way to do that again. Yeah, I mean, I guess you never say never. It's funny. Like we haven't been to conventions in like two plus years, and this is the first year that we've gone back. Two of them, three of them, uh, with London Comic Con coming up. Um, so there's just, it's just, it's, you know, ideas, 
I think, for us to always keep in mind. All right, okay. Nick. Hi, so I remember in the past Hasbro has done some crossover products like Star Wars and Transformers, and I was just curious if we see something like that again, perhaps even with the new Indiana Jones line, which if some of us may recall uh, that already occurred in the Yoda stories game that's now Legends. Uh, so just curious, we might see some Star Wars characters cross over with any of the other Hasbro lines like we had in the past. Yeah, you guys are creative. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking for um, things that we haven't really, you know, like done in a while, for example. Um, yeah, this is, um, you know, we it's an interesting thought. We don't have anything to share, but it's just good to hear some of these, you know, thoughts and suggestions to throw out there. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad that we just launched your indie line that, that obviously came off well among the fan base and yeah. Um, nothing to share at the moment. Thanks. There, there's also been a couple of Indiana Jones Easter eggs in the last two episodes of Andor. So, yeah, there's, so there's clearly Luke some synergy. And, yeah, there's some fun stuff happening. Yeah. All Lucasfilm. Um, <laughs> all right, David. All right. Um, so in the past, you guys had a line of figures for with five points of articulation, and we don't really have that anymore. Um, just throwing it out there again, we need a line of just background weirdos and droids where we can just fill out our, our collection. They don't have to be fancy like vintage collection, but we just need more aliens and more droids. Disney's no kind of filling the droid market right now with their theme park exclusives, but we kind of need we need Hasbro to kind of fill in on the aliens. Noted. <laughs> we love we love background aliens as well. We think they're so fun. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Oh, Jesse. So as a big expanded universe fan, I've been happy to see more of those characters kind of work their way into the toy line. And I'm sure you can reveal any specifics right now, but would you say there are plans for more uh, EU figures going forward covering either the, the comics and novels or maybe even some of the, the games like Dark Forces? Yeah, I mean, we don't, ha don't have any plans to announce or anything, but those characters are, they're part of Star Wars and we draw on all of Star Wars for our product lines. So, I mean, I think you guys have seen that with some fun characters we've done previously, recently. Um, but I, yeah, they're always there and always, always working their way in where we can and where they make sense. Um, Mike. Okay, uh, the last thing I have for you guys, I want to follow up on the other question about HasLab earlier. Uh, I was super, super excited for the Rancor. I really want that thing on my shelf. So I'm, I'm curious about, I know you guys don't have anything to announce or, or whatever, but I, I just want to know the rules of HasLab. Is that is that something where the, the Rancor is just completely dead from now on, or is there a possibility that could come back? Uh, I guess, what are the what are the rules that you guys are going by if something doesn't doesn't make the funding? Well, I mean, I think the fact that it didn't fund speaks to the demand for it. So. I would say it's unlikely that that will show back up. Um, if it if it wasn't enough to fund there, it's unlikely that it makes sense to to release otherwise. Uh, does that change in time? Maybe. So I I think there's not there's not a hard line in the sand saying never. But I think there's there's a tape across the surface that says unlikely. I but it's. There's there's nothing saying it can't ever happen. I just personally I personally think it's unlikely, but we'll see where where things go. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you for supporting that, Mike. Um, I know that there is a group of passionate fans that we and we read that and heard that. Um, but yeah. you know the the beauty of HasLab is that we get to vote on things, and unfortunately, we that didn't come to completion doesn't mean that there aren't future hab labs in place just for us to think about for the future um but yeah all right volker take us home 
Alrighty, um, I know there's like an ongoing Clone Wars celebration going on, but however, this question was asked and is submitted by a fan. And basically, they're cloned out and they're asking um, if you guys could also like give Mud Troopers from Solo or Rogue One figures um, more love than the current Clone Wars. <laughs> well, I, I think celebrating Clone Wars in a year that's an anniversary of Clone Wars makes more sense than going backwards to, to some of that other stuff. But like we said, like Star Wars is a is a big universe, and the time for those characters will probably come back around at some point. So I I think they're good, strong characters. At some point in the future, it's likely we'll look to them, but we don't have them on any plans right now. But maybe down the road. Okay. But I'm glad that your fans are asking about that because um, it's. Again, like yeah. I, I know I sound like a broken record, but we really do depend on the community to tell us a lot about what they demand and stuff. And so, you know, when you guys bring forth these and these conversations or have, you know, brackets and votes and polls and articles, like, yeah, we, you know, it's. We, it's we need to get like crews together, like the Rogue One crew, like base is still missing. And I don't know who else is missing right now. But <laughs> yeah. like clones, yeah. clones, clones. I mean, it's a good thing. People buy them. It's army builders. It's okay. There's a, there's a celebration going on for Clone Wars. That's okay, too. But, you know, if you throw them out there, it looks like it's only clones right now. Of course, it's a Clone Wars anniversary. But, however, that's what people think. Yeah, well, there's more. We, have, we always have more to reveal in general, too. So um, there's definitely lots of news shortcoming. Um, Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I know that this is a larger group. So, you know, thank you for all the questions and for spending time with us. I always wish that we had double the time so we can talk with you longer. Um, but it's just good to hear with you. It's good to touch base. And we do appreciate you taking time out of your day to chat with us. Um, so, yeah, with that, like, you know, hope to see you guys all soon in conventions in the future by any means. Um, but thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you guys for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, guys.